Hello everyone, this is Steve Schubert with another Working Smarter video. Today we're going to be doing tunneling. So the scenario is a, a passenger car has driven up and under something, in this case a, a tractor trailer rig. And uh, we've determined the, for this uh, purposes of this video that our rescue technique is going to be tunneling through the trunk. We're going to pop the uh, trunk lid, cut out the rear dash, go through the back seats, and uh, get the seat backs cut down and be prepared and then create a path that we can slide the victim out on a backboard, rescuing them from under the vehicle. Now there's several ways we can attack this. We can uh, uh, lift the tractor trailer up. If we get a rotator here, we can airbag the tractor trailer up uh, or, and, or find some other means of lifting it. Keep in mind to do that, this tractor trailer, uh, this trailer rather, could be up to 80,000 pounds. So develop your resource list and check your logistics that you can handle those things. We can also use the air system, so in some trailers you can use the air system of the trailer itself to raise that up. Now raising the trailer up is a decent option, however you must capture the squished suspension of the passenger car before you lift the trailer. Otherwise, the car will just rise and the suspension will relax as the trailer rises and you won't have made any progress at all. So that's one of the reasons why tunneling is a viable technique, is that it's not uh, practical to try to lift the, lift the load, stretch the suspension of the car, make no progress, and have to reset to plan B. Often crews go to uh, the tunneling thing right away to. Uh, to, uh, as a shorter path to getting that victim to the appropriate facility. So let's get started. Once the trunk lid is removed, we then begin to remove the rear deck of the vehicle, the rear dash. The takeaway here is um, the back seat and the construction of the rear deck and the, and the rear seat components will vary widely. You just have to get in there and find out how it's constructed, where it's pinned, and then attack those points. Unlike a vehicle where you can be very procedural uh, in, in the instruction of how to remove a door because the door is highly regulated. There aren't, those regulations don't necessarily exist for this engineering here. So we just have to cut away the carpet, uh, examine the, the, the connection points, and attack them with the most appropriate tool. Okay, as you can see, the final removal of the, of the rear seat, we have a nice clear path now into the passenger compartment. That was one fella working uh, for about 10 minutes. So uh, you have to identify the connection points and have the proper tools to uh, fail those connection points and now now we just need to get to the driver it is very important that you use a razor knife or a pocket knife and cut away that upholstery so you can visualize what you're cutting do not make a blind breach cut with these powerful tools see what you're wrapping your tool into and so you have a uh, don't, don't just try to get away with it. Do it the right way. Cut it away and visualize your target and, and, and make the cut once. Okay, as you can see this seat construction design here, we've taken the plastic uh, cover off of the, the hinge point here where the seat pivots forward to allow passengers in the rear. And, and like I was saying earlier, if this is a wide assembly, not uncommon. It's very difficult to get a complete wrap of your hydraulic cutters on this seat back frame. So you want to try to avoid 
this spool part, because that steel extends forward along the floorboard and there's no wrapping that. There's no wrapping that with the cutters. So we're gonna go just above it, make a full wrap as best we can and allow the curve of those blades to draw to draw it in tight and cut that seat back. And you can see, uh, we should be able to cut this seat back pretty good. All right. The other thing to be watchful for are the, are the car seat airbags. So it's another good reason to be always be carrying a pocket knife with you. Strip that upholstery away. Think of it as peel and peak. So now we've laid that seat back down for the driver and, and that has given us a nice clear path. We can slide them out on the backboard, no problem. But uh, let's, let's say that as we're sliding them out on the board, all of a sudden we find that there's a foot entrapment. So now what we're going to do is cut the seat back off of the passenger side to allow us to crawl in there and work and give us room as rescuers to manipul manipulate their feet or their leg, whatever it is that's hung up, preventing us from doing the final removal. We've cut back the passenger side seat in an effort to get access to the driver's legs. Part of, so what we're doing here now is we're going to compress the vehicle, we're gonna spread between the vehicle transmission and the dashboard crash bar to lift the dash up to create space to free the victim. So we often think about when we're doing dashboard maneuvers and things like that is that we're creating space with the with the floorboard, if you will, remaining stationary and we're rolling the dash off. But, but the reality is space is space. We just need to create some vertical gaps here so we can get access to the patient and do what we need to do. So whether we're pushing the floorboard down or lifting the dash up, or in this case doing both, that's perfectly acceptable and somewhat outside the norm perhaps for some of your past training. But uh, as you can see, that we widened this opening to a vast degree. This prevented us from having to uh, lift potentially up to 80,000 pounds. We was able to do this with the hydraulic tools because we worked around lifting the load of the semi-tractor trailer off of the victim by working in this manner up close to the patient where we could take better care of them.